Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into our big one, Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. This is our Let's Play against the Soviet AI, and we take a grand sweeping overview of the South uh, down in Ukraine, uh, in some parts down in Romania, uh, as we're a long, long ways down there, a long ways away from uh, where we want to be, but that's all right. We're going to fight back. Sarge the Rager, you got your uh, top spot back. You were first in, Sarge. I was like that. John Chapel, look at that. John Chapel became a member. Look at that badge. Wow, that looks nice, John. Uh, if you're interested in that, I put it up. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you think you get any kind of value out of this thing, uh, it's always appreciated. Of course, you can start for as low as 99 cents a month. So if you lose that in your couch, usually uh, put it in the dojo. Why not? Uh, anyway, no pressure. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, but it's the join button. Uh, hello, Bananies. How are you? Hi, Big Head Valley. Paul Sanders is here. M60. If I want to manage reserves, the commander's report is the better place to do it in. Well, probably. That is true. It's also not very conducive to streaming, M60. Uh, people, when you start breaking out the spreadsheets, uh, I see the viewership go down. Uh, let me tell you. But yes, we, we may go look at that for a moment if you promise to not turn the channel. Uh, James, how are you? Hi, Gabrielle. Um... Yeah, good to see you guys. It's uh, what? what? What's today? I don't even know what today is. My wife says it's Wednesday. Okay, I, I believe her. Is that true? I don't Maybe. Uh, I believe it's uh, in the month of February anyway. Uh, we're going to go look around at some of the stats and whatnot. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing that. Uh, you know, again, that's kind of the more boring part uh, of it. But, you know, in a game like this, you can't completely just gloss over it. I mean, it's, you know. The numbers. The numbers are what matter. So we'll go do that, and uh, we'll check out the air very quickly. We'll look at the reserve box. That's right. It is 2 two twenty two. Good point. Uh, okay, well, this is our lucky <laughs> This is our lucky day, let's hope. Uh, and then we'll get uh, rolling around the map. We'll get down on the ground and do it. So let's do it. I did want to mention I put up an Ardennes offensive video. We are doing the grand campaign uh, in Ardennes Offensive. I love that game. I love that game system. It's different. If you played decisive campaigns before, like Barbarossa, one thing people don't like about Barbarossa is that uh, there's a lot of reading to be done, a lot of decisions to be made that you're kind of like, I don't know, do I agree with Hitler or not agree with him? I don't know. There's a lot of the, like role-playing aspects to it. And I know some people loved that. Some people didn't like it. Whatever part of the side of the fence you're on, um, Ardennes Offensive doesn't have any of that. It is a straight-up uh, operational sort of level war game, maybe a little bit lower level than this because you have regiments that are broken up um, and you've got artillery pieces to the regiments. I love that game system. I love that game. So we're going to play the Grand Campaign. Uh, check that out. So if you like this game or this type of game, that is right up there with these Grigsby games. So anyway, hey, what's up, Stanley? Good to see you. Uh, I've been making a War in the Pacific video right before this one, Stanley, so there'll be one going up a little bit later. Okay, do 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 Let's look at the news events for last time, and the only thing we have are Soviet partisans. Well, that's a good that's a good only one to have. We didn't lose any more points. Not that that's probably going to tilt anything. Uh, we didn't gain any points either, but we didn't lose any. Let's look at the turn report very quickly. Last turn, we lost 23, nearly 24,000 troops, 461 guns, 43 AFVs, and 36 aircraft. Uh, on the map, we went down 82,000. Now, some of that is we did put some more things in the reserves. So, you know, I mean, we lost 23,000. Some of that probably got replaced, but we did put some things back in the reserves. We probably got... Well, we'll go look. We probably got 150,000 troops in the reserves. 560 guns came off the map. 16 AFVs were added to the map when you netted it all out. 47 uh, aircraft, uh, negative. Okay, the Soviets lost 1515 on the map. We'll take that. Anytime they're not getting a big gob, you know, positive number, we'll take it. 
but they do get that for guns. 874, it's just incredible how much artillery they pump out. 290 AFVs, they probably brought a couple of tank cores onto the map or something, and they gain 140 aircraft. Our logistics is getting much, much, much better now, you can see. I mean, we were requesting 30,000 tons, 30 and a half uh, tons and we got 24,000 so I mean that's a lot better we're still in the winter uh, a lot of that is because we've been pushed back so far that of course our supply system is better it's almost got to be we're closer to the to the uh, fatherland so uh, you know it's getting better anyway it's something that we've really looked at quite a bit during this let's play about you know trucks we've only got 91,000 trucks under repair we've been as high as 130,000 uh, so I'm not saying that's necessarily all my doing, uh, certainly. We've been pushed back a lot, but we now have our depots right on the front line. We've got these fours, you know, pretty much dotting everywhere that we can uh, right up on the troops. And so that seems to be helping quite a bit. So when you play the game, do that from the start. All right. Uh, okay. Well, we'll just go beyond that. It's 513 on the points. They need 525 on April 1st. I think that's turn 94. I think that's right. We can look, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's 94. Uh, so they just need one more town, essentially. They're going to get bonuses. Someone had mentioned that Peskov, maybe there wouldn't be a bonus there. Uh, but there will be, from what I see here. They'll get plus six. If they take Peskov, you can see Minsk, which is now getting threatened by encirclement, uh, is also 16 total. And then down Odessa is 16. So those are the big ones. Lvov is soon to come under pressure, probably. So we'll have to start working about, you know, worrying about Lvov. Once we get beyond that, I mean... You know, Riga we have to worry about, too. So let's just talk about Peskov, Riga, Minsk, uh, Odessa, really, at this moment. Because if they're pushing on Lvov, I mean, now you're talking Krakow, Warsaw. We're not going to hold them off if, if they're all the way back there. So we got to kind of draw our line in the sand right now. Um, let's go to the info screens. We'll look at the overall. No, we've got a lot more in reserves than I even suspected we did. 223,000 men in the reserves. That'll be helpful, certainly. Uh, 2.4 million on the map. We've got 24,000 guns, but, you know, over 2,000 back here. So that'll t pump us up to about 27,000. As compared to the Soviets, they have 68,000 uh, artillery pieces on the map. Crazy numbers. And over 10,000 AFVs now, we've got 3,000. Uh, so, you know, that that's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> that's our own fault. Uh, let's look at overall losses. We're almost at 3.2. The Soviets are at about 9.75 on the man losses. Uh, they're right at 150,000 guns. We're at 50,000 guns. 86.91 on the AFVs. The Soviets 42.811. So, you know, five to one, well, not quite, four and a half to one on the AFVs, and it still doesn't matter. They've got us like three to one on AFVs, maybe four to one anyway. Uh, okay, that was that. Uh, production screen, I know some people like to take a peek here. Uh, you can see in our manpower pool, we've got 94,400 for the Germans, 94,000, a little bit more. Uh, we've got a lot of Hungarian Hungarians in the pool. Get out of the pool, Hungarians. Let's do this thing. Uh, that's about it. I don't really look at that screen that much. Uh, let's look at the weather. Let's see what's going on. This is the weather on the ground. You can see we've got snow all over Eastern Europe. Okay. Into the turn. It doesn't really change on the ground. You can see the weather systems moving around, though, but Let's look at the weather in the air at the start of the turn. We have a full blizzard on the map, as you would expect in Soviet Russia in uh, February of 43. We've got a full blizzard out here. By the end of the... Oh, that is the end of the turn. My bad. I thought I was over here. At the start of the turn, the blizzard is to the north. And we're saying, nah, I don't think that blizzard's going to get here. Wrong. Uh, that blizzard's all over. But you can see that... Heavy rain is moving into the west. That would be really helpful if we get a lot of mud out here, meaning if we can hold them for the next two or three turns and this map starts to get really muddy for a while, 
that only helps the defender. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm no expert, but I assume uh, that mud is going to help the defense. Uh, okay, fine then. Let's turn back. I have the air on. Oh, I did have the air on. Uh, as you can see, some of our air units are going to start getting overrun here unless we do something about it. We have no air units in the north. We do have some air units back here. What do we have? Uh, we've got some JU-88s back here, KG-1. So we've got level bombers back at Riga. Just a few of them. Now, it's interesting... If we click on it, are they part of KG-55? They're not. Okay. Um, may want to move them out of there. Well, I'll keep them at Riga. Okay, that's fine. KG-55 is back here. We should give them some kind of command, I would think. I actually maybe want to put them in KG-55. Let's go back here to the airfield. Sign... Uh, KG-55. They're probably a little out of command zone, to be honest with you, but we may move them down a little bit. So, uh, level bombers, KG-55. Can I put him in there? Nope. Looks like they're over. What else do we have down here that's a level bombing group? KG-53. Why could I put it in that? I could bring out a new command. Uh, we do have commands back here. Maybe I'll do that, actually. Uh, KG-3, bases, groups. It doesn't have anything right now. What about KG-4? Well, let's bring out one that doesn't have anything. So KG-3 is now on the map. I guess I should have assigned the other one to that. Uh, can I go back and do that, or can you only do the air one time, like everything else? Well, let's find out. Ah, oh, you can switch the air multiple times. The air commands. Okay. Well, those guys are both now in KG-3. We'll take it. Uh, I get it. I got a free command change there. I like it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't even realize we still had level bombers there. If we look down the map, sometimes if the AOGs aren't out here, you got to look literally at the airfields and just see what's on an airfield uh, because there's no other indicia that they're out there. You know, I mean, with the AOGs, you click on that and you can see the airfields they're on. But if something's not attached to an AOG, you've got to find it, I guess this is the best way to put it. Uh, do I want to get out of Glubco? Well, it looks like he's bringing a lot of strength to Glubco, so I probably need to. Where could we put it, though? Vilnius is already over. We did. There just aren't any airfields out here. I mean, maybe I should have built one. Uh, we haven't really built an airfield yet in the game. You can do that. Uh, like if we were here, Pastavi, and we go here, build an air base here. Uh, but I think it's a little too late for that. Well, we're going to fight like hell for Globco. How many planes do I have here? It's not an insignificant number. If it was only like four or five, and we've got a lot of dive bombers out here. All right. Well, let's see what we can do here. You know, I'm going to drag them across all of this and see where they want to go. They want to go way back. I hate to do that, but I think we've got to. Uh, media transfer. All right. So back they go. And then we'll take JG3 and we'll do the same old drag. Maybe I'll put them back like in this area. Because I've got some fighters down by Minsk. Or do I? Let's... Let's determine that before I start moving things around. Oh, get off that. Okay. Yeah, I've still got fighters in Minsk, but they're probably going to have to back up as well. Well, okay, let's uh, let's bring these fighters up. It's too far back, though. Um, well, I'll stretch it across, not on top of the Hungarians. Let's stretch it across here. It wants to go all the way down here and up here. Well, okay. Immediate transfer. Get out of there. Get out! All right, we've got to hold Minsk, so I'm not moving any aircraft out of Minsk. If we lose those aircraft, well, the game's probably over anyway. We do have some aircraft here for KG-53. This could move back, and we could... Whoops, let's put them on these level 3s air bases over K 
KG-53. There we go. Let's put them right here on these level three bases. Uh, it's Sawalki and Radsky. Uh, okay, media transfer, yes. And now those level bombers, I mean, they were being protected by Hungarians. Uh, we're going to keep that there. I think maybe JG-3. Let's move it down here onto that level two base. And let's do another immediate transfer. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm screwing you around here. Now, they're not going to be able to help protect the north down here, but at least they're a little closer to the front. Um, Where else do I have aircraft down here? Looking for green, yellow, or red. I don't see any. Let's click off that. Uh, the Flieger Corps, we've got them here, 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 and here. That all looks fine. The Stukas are in Brody. JG-52 is in Lutz. That's fine. JG-54. Now, let's go to the reserves. But before we do, let's go to the comments. What's going on? Um, Kalo says, airfields take forever to build. That is true. Uh... David Allen says, when the Germans are almost back to Poland, why are they so weak? Well, there, there's a novel that could be written about that. As a matter of fact, we over 250 episodes we have written on. But uh, yes, there's a lot that's happened here. Uh, certainly, uh, some ill-advised offensives will uh, really hurt your... Uh, your strength. Let's put it that way. We've got a lot of headquarters units sitting in here. It's fewer mouths to feed. As we need them, we'll bring them out. Armor units. Did any of this rebuild? The Romanians, not really. Not really. These guys just didn't really rebuild at all. Got some uh, Panzer battalions we had just put forth in. I mean, he didn't get anything. Motorized. This just came back. He's at an 84. We'll try to get that back on the map as fast as we can. Now, we had some units in here. First of all, let's put the Italians on the map. All right. Then we had some that were rebuilding that we purposefully had on refit. And now I don't remember. I thought it was like 35th. Maybe I already moved those guys out. Oh, it was 76th and 121st. All right, we got to get them back on the map. Let's do that. Back on the map, you go. So they did rebuild. I mean, they got up to 87 and 88 TOE. It's not perfect, but they rebuilt a little bit. Okay, so 121st. So now they head back to the map. This Jaeger division, no. We put one back here that's now an 87. Okay, 47, 28. Is there anything else in here that looks halfway interesting? Not really. All of these guys are weak as can be. Well, let's take two more infantry divisions, the best ones we've got, 36, 46. All right, well, let's put this one on refit. That's at 46 already. Um, I said that like that was a big number. 331st, that's also at 46. The Narva SS Estonian Infantry is at 60. Okay, that's a support unit. Um, whoops, nope, nope, nope. That's not what I meant to do. I caught it just in time. I want refit on. Okay, so now let's check. Refit's on. Where's my other guy that's uh, 46? I've lost him. There he is. Uh, refit on. Okay, we got those both ready to go for next time. We should have gotten two new units on the map. We'll check that in a minute. Oh, I guess I didn't look at what was coming on and off the map. Uh, cavalry, okay, none of the guns are ready. Anti-air, all of this crap's been back here forever. We must just not be getting much anti-air produced. Uh, I could go look at that, but I'm not going to slow the stream down to do that. Mountain Infantry, 48 SP guns. Now, nope, nothing happening interesting there. So that's our reserve. But I also wanted to look at the air reserve and just see. Oh, I hate when the it does that. There we go. We zoomed. Oh, by the way, I think there's a new update out for this game today. So, uh, you know, we're still on the original version, but I've heard that there was a new update. Fighter bombers. These guys are at full strength. That Grupa, that can come back. This one, eh, 32. You know, it should have 40 in it. 
uh, 40 for JG52. So we've got some fighter bombers that come back out. Tacticals, we've got, you know, 60 Stukas right there. And then we've got some Romanian dive bombers that are ready to go and some more Stukas over here. So we've got quite a number of those. A lot of level bombers. I'm going to, you know, we're heading into a blizzard here. I'm not going to bring them back on the map. But what I was looking for are transport aircraft. Did we have any? And it doesn't look like it. Uh, I don't think that they're listed with the recon, or they shouldn't be. Uh, they should have their own designation. I'll make sure that's true, but this says all recon. I don't see any transports. Uh, yeah, recon. Just making sure, because as utility aircraft, they're kind of batched up the same way sometimes, but I don't think down here they would be. They shouldn't be. Uh, I just can't remember. I know we brought stuff back on the map. Yeah, this is all recon, uh, but I'll make 100% sure later. Okay, out of the reserves. We've done that for this time. Now, I thought I saw some units up here, and I got all excited, and indeed I did. Ah, oh, crap. I was hoping that was a Panzer, an SS Panzer division. It is not. It's SS Panzer Corps. That's ready to go. Well, we've got all the we've got the mechs up there that are, you know, should really be an SS Panzer. Uh, so we'll move him up there. We've got an infantry division in that we'll deal with. Then things that came out of the reserves, we have 13th Panzer, 35, 35th ID, and 50th ID. If we look at the TOE, 98 for that infantry, uh, 97. Look at that. Peace, love, and harmony in the 35th infantry. Uh, 13th Panzer is 86. Okay, what are the elements looking like in a Panzer division now? So this one just got restocked by the template. Um, and if we look down here, we get 55 Stugs. Okay, uh, six Panzer Jaeger IIs, 33 3Ms, 24 Gs, 13 3Ns, and some 2 Fs. So we only have 20 of the fours, but the three M's are pretty good. Three M's and N's, uh, you know, they're not quite fours, but we're a long ways down the alphabet. Uh, yeah, if we look at the TOE, what the template is now, uh, it is the 42B Panzer Division template. And you can see here the percentages of what we should have. And we're, we're doing pretty well on the tanks. Recon tanks, we've only got 19%, 4 of 21. We should have 21 for the full template. Uh, flak, we're a little low on flak. I was saying that we had lost, a, or we don't have much AA, and that's showing up in these uh, units. It looks like they're building to the templates. Uh, 26 on the light AT guns, that's not a good thing. Uh, something to keep in mind if we see tank cores out here. And 62% uh, on the medium flak. So our flak is looking a little light. Okay, uh, good to know. All right. Well, that's the TOE for the 13th Panzer Division, if you're really wondering about that. Uh, as far as the air directives go, ground support, Luftwaffe 1 is doing it for the north and the center where it's necessary. Luftwaffe 4, oh, we took uh, that out. So we've got Army Group South. Uh, hold on. Let's go out to Luftwaffe 4. Down here, we've got Army Group B. That's definitely something we want Luftwaffe 4 doing ground support for. So let's do the ground support and look for Army Group B down here, if we can find it. We've got Army Group A. Army Group South, only the 13th Corps is in that. What the hell? I don't know. We're going to have to go look at that. Why am I not seeing Army Group B? Am I crazy? I don't see Army Group Dawn down here either. Army Group Center, that makes sense. Army Group North, that makes sense. Army Group A has 17th Army in Hungarian. Okay, that's right. Antonescu... Then, then it only shows Army Group South, first pan. I mean, it shows a lot of the individuals. There's Kempf, but I don't see Army Group B. Okay, 
Uh, it's showing. Oh, can you just click on it on the map? Oh, it did it to Sixth Army. Yeah, no, I don't want that. Let's go edit this one. Sixth Army Ground Headquarters. Let's try this one more time. This could be some kind of bug or something because I'm certainly not seeing Army Group B. I better go to the comments because somebody's probably screaming. There it is. Uh... Yeah, Nord, I'm with you. They had taken Peskov, and so, you know, it's weird that they're getting a second bonus potentially for Peskov. I, I agree. I, I find that weird. That I even went to look when I read your comment because I was like, oh, yeah, that's probably true, and we could give up Peskov and maybe fall back a little bit. Nope, unfortunately not. I don't know. I don't see Army Group B out here. So uh, we're not going to confirm that. Let's look. Get off the screen. I hate this screen. Get off this. Get off of orders. There we go. Let's go look here. It's not there. Let's take the air off. This is not where Army Group B is. I thought it was right here. Third remain. Did Army Group B get removed? Uh, let's go look. I didn't see a withdrawal on it, but I guess it's possible. Anything's possible. No, I don't see it here. Okay, I'll figure this out on my own. We're not down here by Army Group B anyway. Uh, but, well, shit, we kind of got to have... If we want ground support down here, now it is going to be a blizzard. What is this? Army Group Dawn. No, that's Army Group South. Oh, did it just become Army Group South? That's weird, because we had Army Group B and Army Group Dawn. But for whatever reason, it seems like it's now converged in, again into Army Group South. Okay, sorry. I did, I'm did. i a little confused, and that's probably confusing me. You, me? You? See, that's how confused I am. Um, okay, well, tell you what, then. Let's go ahead and do ground support. Let's turn these back onto the map. And we'll do Army Group South. And then we're going to have to reconfigure some of this stuff down here. Because it looks like those two merged. Okay, Luflata 4, ground support, Army Group South. There it is. Okay, so now it's going to run it for Army Group South. Confirm. Perfect. And now let's go to the directives. The uh, L uh, Luftwaffe KDO East has Antonescu. Perfect. Um, I'm not going to run it on Army Group A. It's too far north. It's mainly Hungarians. I'm not going to run any ground support there. Let's go ahead and get out of the directives and execute them. So we're going to have to put everything in that Army Group South now. Okay. It's interesting. Maybe we hit a certain point or whatever, and in the game mechanics, it combines Army Group Dawn and Army Group B together, or maybe it's a time thing. I'm just not sure about that. Obviously, I don't know, as you may be able to tell by this discussion. Okay, thanks, Bananas. Yeah, Six Army back at OKH. I bet you all of their commands jump back up to OKH. We're going to have to either put them in Army Group A or Army Group B again. Maybe it's because of the number of units we have on the map. Uh, something like that. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, it's just gone back. They just changed the name back. Okay, okay. Well, we'll figure it out. Uh, thanks, though. I, You know, thanks for... Helping me figure it out. We'll we'll deal with it when we get to the south, which won't be today, uh, because first of all, we go up to the Narva line. Let's make sure everything here is in command. Eight of nine in Narva on the 50th Corps under Lindemann, who has sat out here just chilling for a very long time. He has only fought in 60 total battles, and he's been in charge of 50th Corps since the start of the war. Um... So, interesting, you know, I mean, these guys have sat here for a year and a half. Still no Soviet indication they're going to attack there. I'm fine by that. 16th Army, a little over, 29 of 27. Okay, good to know. 
16th Army coming back to Army Group North, which duh, oh, we've got the Panzer Division on the train. Army Group North is here, 76 and 108. So one thing we may do is put more in Army Group North, move up the Hungarians or something up into Army Group Center, and that'll allow us more command in the south. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so I think everything about the Narva line is fine. I had thought about maybe attaching a support unit directly into Narva, and I think I will. They're in a, a level three fort. Well, God darn it. I don't want to quote unquote waste it. Now what's going to happen is they're eventually going to get attacked, and I'm going to say I really wish I would have done that. But you know what? We've just got other places we need stuff. I'm not going to put a support unit in there. Okay. Uh, at, speaking of places where we need things, uh, Peskov is certainly falls in that category. We've got a lot that's come in here. Two infantry divisions, a panzer division to the rescue. We've also got a corps up here that I'm bringing up here to add a little command to things. 16th Army's over. 18th Army's all the way back here, but we may flip some things there. He's only at 23 of 27. So if we have something that only has two divisions, it can go into 18th. Do we have any such thing? Well, it's a good question. But before I do that, I'm actually going to start down here. Uh, the old Smolensk bulge. And we're going to back some of this up and we're going to get this all settled. Well, from here north. I consider this the Minsk uh, area and we'll we'll deal with Minsk later probably the next time we stream but for this time I'm going to start moving these guys because ultimately uh, it's too confusing up there until I know what I've got here so we're just going to move well they can only move back one this is easy enough right who's their commander it's 53rd I believe that's Kleeman it is does Kleeman have everything he needs he probably needs another artillery Let's give him the best one we have, the super heavy howitzer. Dun, dun, dun. So now he's got three, including mixed. He's got light flak and heavy flak. He does not have mixed artillery or uh, the flak with mixed. We're really running out of flak. Motorized mixed flak. We'll put that in with Kleeman. Okay, what else does he have? Pioneers, construction, Werfer. That all looks fine. Okay. Well, I think it's simple enough. We just back these guys up. Now, who is he stacked with? Only 7944 in that unit. But I think what I can do, and we'll see, let's move this back here. Okay. So we've got these three. And now here, eight of nine, this is 27th Corps under Hartnick. He's got all of the support units we generally like him to have. We could put a Stug in there if we had one, but no, no such luck. Um, these are Hartnecks units. Um, what I'd like to do is maybe take one of the... Nah, I can't afford to do that. I was going to take one of these and stack it here because we're under some pressure here, certainly. Uh, we'll check it out as we move north. So, okay, we've looked at Kleeman. Now we've got Hartnick's core, uh, you know, in command, looks good. He's got his support units, fine. Can't wait to get this back on the line. We should be able to do it next time, and then we can double stack or we can move some more things down here, whatever the case may be. This double stack's really weak. Uh, this is strong. They are weak, but he is strong. 14,000 men here. What do we have on the TOE? 78, 84. He's got 127% on the food, 80% on the bullets. I do look at all those things. Sometimes I just very quickly shorthand the number of men. Uh, but yes, I mean, everything's important, right? Um, certainly. I mean, if they don't have food, it doesn't matter how many men they have. If they don't have bullets, uh, the TOE matters. All of that matters. But sometimes I just shorthand it. Uh, I know that. Okay, 267th ID here. He's strong. He's staying right there. 10, 295. Not as strong as we'd like. He definitely doesn't need to be on refit. And it doesn't matter. He couldn't refit anyway. None of these guys are on refit. They're not on refit. This unit's not on refit. Okay. 
Now we move around, and 4th Army has got 24 of 27 under Heinrike. So 4th Army sitting here. Okay. That's pretty much all of 4th. I mean, there's nothing much to say more. Oh, let's look at 10th Corps under uh, Recknagel. 8, 7, 5, and 7. He's a decent general, certainly good on morale. The guys love to follow this guy into battle. He's got 3 artillery, the flak, construction, werfer. Again, we just don't have any stugs or anything like that out here. They are building fort levels as we go. Maybe give him... Uh, he's got two construction battalions. Okay, uh, so that's 4th Army. It's all right here. I you know, I can't really do much of it with them until I move these guys back on the line. Then I can get these two, maybe go have them rebuild or something. But that's all going to be kind of conditioned on what the hell we can do here, because this looks like a big problem. Uh, but let's get into Ninth Army. So this is Ninth Corps of Ninth Army underneath Mr. Rendelik. If we look up here, uh, he's got mixed heavy, uh, he's got motorized mix. Let's give him some light flak if we can. Goodness gracious. These guys are all ripped up too. They should really all go back to the reserves, but they're not rebuilding back there anyway. Uh, heavy howitzer. We do have a werfer. Nah, that's fine. I'm going to leave as is. Okay, so we've got about 22,000 men out here. 61, 69. 61, 68. They've got a little food. Well, he's got a decent amount of food and bullets, uh, certainly. They're not in great shape, but they're going to have to hold. Here we go into Globco, also part of 9th Corps. You know, total 23, 24,000 men, something like that. 42 and 52. This guy probably needs to get out of here. Uh, okay, we'll remember that. He's down to 42. This guy's at 68. It's not like that's much better. It is hard to supply this area up here. Uh, it, it has been since the game started. 81st ID is sitting back here. He's part of 6th Corps. We go to 6th Corps. Walt Weiss, excellent general. Uh, howitzers. He's got some flak. A lot of our flak got blown out. Uh, how many times are I going to say that? Many times, because it's it's concerning me, certainly. That's only 5,000 men, okay? That's 14,000. We've got to cut this off. So what I'm going to do, this is 8321. That's no good either, really. Um, this unit has to get out of here. He's got to get out of here. He's 15 of 30. I mean, he's not even an operational fighting force anymore. Let's move him over to the rail. Well, he's on the rail. Can Well, I don't think we can ship him out when he's next to the Soviets. What if he moves one, though? Oh, he can't even go. He doesn't even have enough to get over this way. Uh, Fine. Let's move him down here on the rail. He's going to... Yeah, it is. I, I had to take like three glances at that to make sure it was the, wrong, the right unit. And this unit is devastated as well. Look at this, 4,000. We're in big, big trouble with this right here. We're going to have to get back here. We may have to give up Globco at some point because I don't think we can hold anything off here. We may have to keep this motorized down here just to play defense Kind of play center field back here. I don't see what else we can do. Well, this unit's going to have to go here. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. And this unit's going to have to go here. We can't get in a situation where these guys get cut off. Uh, Walt Weiss is going to take a step back. He's like, whoa, this situation got a little escalated. Uh, makes me think of Will Ferrell leaning back in the chair, uh, drinking a beer. Uh, 84... 58. Well, they're certainly going to come after the depot, but I think we maybe have to move this guy or move him over or double stack or something. This is a pretty strong unit. 15,000. He's 68 and 84. 111 and 88. Nah. I mean, he's strong. He's strong, relatively speaking, for what we have. What is this again? 8321. I think I got to stack these guys together. That would overburden Weiss, but that's 
okay. Gustav Fenn only has four over here, so we can switch something else out. I hate having what's in the depot. These guys, gosh darn it, 61 and 62. That's these guys. I hate to move, have to. I may have to move these guys over and just leave Glubco the last line of defense, but this is a pretty, pretty defensible hex, isn't it? Light, nah, it's light woods. I may have to leave a gap right here, but they're going to certainly cut the rail then. Well, I'm going to think about that one, but I think this unit's definitely going to have to move over at some point. Well, we'll get back to that. He's going to be there. We know that. He's going to be here. I know that. This unit's got to get the hell out of here. I, I don't think we have any choice about that, so we're almost certainly going to have to move one of these over. So let's get him put on the rail down here. And that also means that our uh, the handsome Gustav Fenn is going to have to back up. Let's put him right there. We have may have to bring the motorized around here. I don't really see a better option. And we can't let him break through here. If he gets back here, you know, fox in the hen house time. Can these guys? No, they can't get out of here. They don't have enough movement points. I wonder... Tell you what, I'm not even going to put them in the reserve. We'll start building them in town, but we'll talk more about that later. We're going to take this one core that doesn't have anybody. We're going to set it right on this depot, and we're going to just start rebuilding things, or maybe Vilnius. We'll see. Uh, so moving around here, what do we have here? 64 and 59. Good gracious. That's not going to do much either, obviously. I would rather they be here in the light woods, even if they don't have a fort level, but I'm pretty sure they're just going to get blown the heck out of here. Um, $14,083.21. What do these guys look like? They've got bullets, some. They've got decent food, 35 of 43 on that TOE, and 32 of 36. Yee, yee, that's not good. But we do have this motorized I can do something with. I don't want to put him in the woods, obviously. Um, got a little lake down there. Let's back these guys up one. I don't want this to become a bulge again, but I'm not really sure what else to do with them. I could double stack them with something and just put the motorized over here in the light woods. I guess that's an idea. What is this? Is this rough? No, it's clear. Clear. I don't want them to get all the way down here and we just have this Minsk bulge. That would just be a disaster. Um, but I'm, I'm not seeing how we have much better option. I may have to start pulling some of this back. Uh, but I'm going to give it one more turn. What has he got? 81, 35, 45, and 52. You know, I wanted to keep this. I wanted to keep this extended, just so this doesn't become a very narrow lane out to Minsk. You know, there's nothing up here that we really have to protect, though. We could come further back, certainly, if we needed to, back into these woods. But now, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, that is just not very wide. That's what I'm going to have to think about. Yeah, CPP, uh, combat combat prep points. The more you sit around, the more you build up combat prep points. They're right here, the cross swords. Uh, in this game, we haven't had them that often. Now, some of the units that have sat around for a while, let's just take a unit like this that's been sitting here. You see it's got 73 combat prep points. This one that moved back's only got eight. Now, that's going to give you bonuses in contact. In, contact in combat so the more you sit the more you're going to have now most of these units down here should be pretty good 79 and 57 here sitting in odessa 100 combat 100 so it's just a bonus that you're going to get right got to remember 
that motorized withdraws on turn 90. That's the last thing we need are things withdrawing, certainly. This is just a real mess in here. I'm going to have to come back to that with this motorized because we may have to pull back from Globco, you know, about out to where. There's nothing that's much more defensible than what we have out here. We're right on this line with all the heavy, but we could come back from, let's say, here, and then we've got a natural lake hex and then into the deep woods and then up this way swamp there's always something gentlemen there's always something uh okay nothing there to do as of right now that i know about now i wanted to scoot some of this around but i don't really think we're going to be able to we're going to have to have motorized manning the line everywhere now this unit's not strong he's completely surround you know he's going to get completely surrounded if we don't watch it this motorized is actually not very strong we just moved him out here because it's it's something but we do have infantry go that's going to come up on the line um and we have this panzer division back here but he can't get very far i mean this is bad terrain and he's back around us this field division okay this motorized might be what we have to send to deal with this and then we put infantry down here we may have to give up that depot but I'm going to save all that for next time because I'm not going to sit here and scratch my head for 15 minutes and then say the stream is over. I'm going to look at it. Um, yeah, yeah, there are a lot of things withdrawing. Things on turn 90, we know that. Uh, we will we'll look at that next time, Nordhammer. Um, thanks for that. I'm going to call this one quits. Now, I am not going to be streaming tomorrow, so I will be back on Friday. We did confirm it was Wednesday, right? So I'm going to come back on Friday, but I may put up a recording tomorrow. Uh, so I'm going to sit around tonight and think about this, and I probably will put together a recording of what I decide to do. Uh, and put that up tomorrow at the usual time. So at 3 o'clock, I'll just schedule it for it to go up at 3 o'clock my time. So it's almost like I streamed. Uh, you guys won't have to stare at my mug, my mean mug tomorrow. Uh, not on the recording anyway. And then I'll be back Friday. So Friday and Saturday will definitely stream. Sunday's a little bit up in the air. Check out that Ardennes offensive video. I'll have another Distant Worlds video up. War in the Pacific going up later. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, lots of stuff on the channel. So anyway, thank you guys all for the support. We just went past. We're, we're climbing up almost to 5,000 subs. If you like the content, sub. Watch an ad all the way through. I don't know. Hell, even become a member. It looked kind of cool, John Chapel. Uh, he's an army commander on the membership thing. <laughs> so anyway, you know, no pressure if you want to. You guys be good. Talk to you uh, Friday.